Hello and God bless you. Well, today we are going to talk about what people in the church do not want to hear. Today we're talking about tithes and offerings or giving. And you know, for a lot of people sitting in the pews, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear about the church asking for money. And things of that sort. And I understand that. You know because. You know there are some people that. Are. Not doing it for the right reasons. They're trying to. Just. Fatten their wallets and. Things of that sort. But we're going to see what the Bible has to say about tithes and offerings. Now first we're going to kind of explain what tithes and offerings are. Tithes was given to Israelites by God in the law, the Mosaic law. And that's where God Commanded that all the Israelites give 10% of everything that they earned. And an offering is what is freely given to either the church or a ministry or like missions. And we're going to see here first. The Strong's definition of what tithing is. There you see it as a tenth part. And here's some scriptures that talk about tithing. Sorry, I thought I had that more center than I did. But clearly it's not a center. But... The first one's here in Leviticus 27, verse 30, which says, And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And now we're going to go to Numbers 18:26, which says, Thus speak unto the Levites, and say unto them, When you take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you, from them for your inheritance then you shall offer up a heave offering of it for the Lord even a tenth part of the tithe and now we're going to Deuteronomy 14.22 which says thou shalt truly the tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And now we're going to Second Chronicles 31.5 which says, And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought it in abundance, the first fruits of corn, wine and oil, and honey, and of all the increase of the field, and the tithe of all things brought they in abundance. And now we're going to see a, as we see, as we said, you know, the tithe was God had commanded the Israelites in the law to give a tenth, tenth part of what they, of their increase to him. Their wages, their, you know, what they've grown and things of that sort. But we see an example of tithing 10% before the law. Because the law was by Moses. And that was after the Exodus when they left Egypt. But Abraham, he was pre the Exodus.
he was the grandfather of the one who would be named Israel and have the 12 children that were the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob. And we see this here in Hebrews 7, 1 and 2, and it says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who made Abraham, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. So see, Abraham gave a tenth of everything that he had gotten after, of everything he had after he had defeated the, the ten, or the, excuse me, the five kings. You know, whenever he came up to, well, after the Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, I don't think it's after, but you know, around, um, but the king of Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff all came together, and when Abraham got done slaying him, he went into Jerusalem, which at the time was called Salem, and Melchizedek was the priest, and Abraham visited with him because he knew he was a he was a prophet of God. And he gave him a tenth part. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 16.2 Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prepared him, that there be no gaining when I come. So this is kind of giving us an example here of how we are to give our tenth part of our income is to bring it to Sunday morning, or at least that's how I see it. I mean, you can do this however you want. If you work and get paid weekly, you know, if you, on Sunday morning you can pay your tithes of your first Give me your ten um, percent of your income that you got that week. If you get paid every two weeks, you can do it the the first Sunday after you get paid, or if you get paid monthly, you know, vice versa, you know, whatever it may be. And you know, some people believe that um, we don't need to be tithing. That's an Old Testament thing. And Christian tithing is considered giving. That's what some people believe. But we do know this. That God does say. In Malachi 3.8. Will man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say. Wherein have ye we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. So that's telling us there, and I believe it does apply to us today, that if we're not giving 10% of our income, we are robbing God. And more importantly, what should, you know, stand out to you as well, is you're robbing yourself of a blessing from God. And I'm not doing this message to try to get y'all sending me money or trying to get you to tithe if you ain't tithing because it's a heart thing. You know, what do you want to do? If you want to trust God and believe that He can provide for you, that He can take this 10% of you out of your income and... You can still live, 
then tithe. I mean, if you if you don't trust that God can help you through it, then don't. But as we will see today, the Word of God tells us how faithful God is to us who are faithful to Him. We do know that God is our provider. He will meet any needs we may have, whether it be financial, whether it be healing, breaking the chains of addiction, whatever you may be going through. God is our provider. He is our helper. He's our great physician. And we see in Genesis 22, verse 14, this is when Abraham is about to sacrifice Isaac. And it says, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said that to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And Jehovah Jireh means our provider. I should have gave a little definition thing of that too, just so you could see for yourself what it says in the Bible dictionary, what Jehovah Jireh means, but that is what it is. That is our that God is our provider. And Jesus explains it in Matthew 6, 25 through 33, how God provides for us. Jesus says in 625, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life, for what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on, is not life more than meat, in the body, then raiment. Going to 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than, the, than they? <coughs> Excuse me. Than they. Going to 627. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Now in 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toll not, neither do they spin. Now on the 29. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now on to 30. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And now we're going to 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Now on to 32. For after these things do seek the Gentiles, do the Gentiles seek, excuse me. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Now on to 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So as we see here, Jesus is confirming that God is our provider. And he will provide us anything we need. And if, you know, and that's, that's showing us, you know, if, if we're faithful and we tithe to, you know, so that we can be blessed, <clears throat> you know, if, if we give that 10% of our income, which is a pretty decent chunk, especially if you're, a paycheck to paycheck type of person. You know, there's some that you may be well off that, you know, you can afford to give 10%. But, you know, there's people that are getting paid minimum wage and stuff. And when you think about 10% of the income after already getting taxes and everything taken out, you know, it's a pretty good chunk. But if you do it, 
we see right here that God will provide. He's showing us here that, you know, we don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to worry about what we'll eat or drink, what we'll wear, you know. You got a whole pair of holy jeans and, you, and you're thinking, well, I, gotta, I can't tithe this week because I got to buy a new pair of jeans. You know, if we put God first, he'll make a way that we can afford those, that pair of jeans. <clears throat> and we touched on the second part of this last week when we were talking about prayer. And today we're going to talk about tithing. And we're staying here in Matthew, but we're going to the front of the chapter and we're going to read 2 through 4. And it says, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound the trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But when thou doest th doeth alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That th thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And of course, when it's talking about alms here, which I guess we should have done definition for this too, just to show you that I'm not making this up. <clears throat> but go read it for yourself, if you like. We always do have the sermon notes here at the end of the, at the bottom of the video. But this is talking about giving. And in the previous verse, it said, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. Or your left hand know what your right hand's doing. <clears throat> so basically what that's saying is, you know, don't do it to, you know, because you want people to show people that you're doing it, that you're important. I'm trying to think how to say it exactly, but, you know, I, the best example I can think of is a third, a, th a third man alive, a philanthropist. I hope I said that word right. I'm tripping over it. But a philanthropist, you know the word I'm trying to say that I cannot spit out for some reason. You know they, um, that's what they do is that they're, it's like their career, where they like give to. Charities and stuff, which is good. There's nothing wrong with giving to charities and everything. But when they're at the, doing that philanthropy, I think I said that word right, I think. You know, that's, you know they're getting like these tax write-offs and whatnot. And it's like saying, hey, look how great I am. I just gave $500 to, you know, whatever. But, you know, if you only got a buck or two, but you like a charity or or whatever it may be. Maybe you want to give to your local food pantry to help people in need. You know, just give it. Don't, don't, you know, you don't have to go like saying, you know, that you're sounding alarm saying, hey, I'm giving to the local food pantry. Just give. It don't have to be an extravagant amount. Give what you can. But it, this verse right here is saying that do it in secret. Don't don't do it to get praise. Don't do it so they go, oh, did you see him? He just gave to the food pantry. Ain't that great? Isn't he a good guy? No. Do it in secret. Don't let anybody know. Because God's going to reward you for it. Excuse me. I love what it says here in Acts 20.35. 
I have shown you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And that's very true. If you've given a present, let's say Christmas time, you you didn't have, I mean, um, you just showed up to a, just say you just showed up to someone's house or whatever. But since you knew that you were going to show up, you bought them a present. And then they go, well, I, I figure I didn't buy it him or her or whatever and, you know, provide them some food and that'll be gift enough for them. But you bought them this gift. Wrapped it all pretty and whatnot, give it to him, then they're like, "I didn't give, him. I didn't give him or her anything." It's not what this is about. And if you, you know, if you give, give somebody like loan somebody money, or if you're given to a charity or whatever, you know, when once you do that, you'll feel this pride in your heart. So that's when you do it secretly, like Jesus said to do. You know, you're going to. You're going to feel this pride that I did something nice, not expecting anything in return. Now we're going to go to Malachi 3.10. Earlier we read 3.8 where it says not to rob God. Here it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, therefore, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And if we've ever stepped out in faith, and started tithing giving to our 10 percent of our income or or just started giving more i mean maybe you're just uh maybe you're just somebody that just gives a couple bucks in the offering plate and one day you just kind of fill in your heart to give a couple more bucks maybe you give five bucks and you do ten or maybe you usually give a dollar or two but you you have it in your heart to give five you know, God's showing you, and he's saying here, you know, and this is, like I said, this is a hard issue. It's not a, you know, you have to do this because someone's telling you to thing. You know, if you're, if you feel like the, the church you're going to, if you feel, or you were going to, if you felt like you were kind of, like they were trying to force you into tithing and stuff. And you didn't want to do it. I understand. I went through the same thing. But here God's saying. To bring your stuff into the storehouse. To prove him. That means to test him. It's like. Like you're stepping out in faith and saying, okay, Lord, I feel like you're wanting me to give five bucks this week instead of two bucks, or you want me to give 25 instead of 10, or whatever it is that you do. And you're stepping out in faith. God says, he promises, and says right here, to prove him, if he will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. So he's saying, you know, if you step out in faith and you do what I'm asking you to do, I want to give you a blessing that's going to be so amazing that you're not going to know what to do with it. And we continue this in Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. 
It says in Proverbs 3 9, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. And right here in verse 10, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So once again, it's saying here, you know, if you're stepping out and you're doing something that's out of your comfort zone, it, you know, it, it will be. If you don't give 10%, but you feel like the Lord's leaning on your heart to do it, like I said, it's a, it's a heart issue. It's a, between you and God. It's not, you know, the preacher's telling you you're worthless if you're not tithing. I mean, because, you know, like I said, it's, it's between you and God. If you choose to not tithe, you know, that's... I see it as, you know, a lot of us will see it as a... like a disobeying God, but maybe God's... Maybe it's an issue he's not working with you yet. But if you feel that God is personally talking to you, and I... I can, I can say it this way. And I'm sure everyone may know what I'm talking about. Let's say that you only got a couple bucks in your pocket. Maybe like five bucks or something. And the offering plates can pass by you. And you feel like the Lord's telling you, go ahead and put that couple bucks or five bucks or whatever it is in your wallet. Go ahead and put it in the offering. And you're like, this is my bus fare to get to work tomorrow. This is my you know, to buy something for lunch for work tomorrow or whatever it could be. You know, this is whatever it may be. And I'm I'm sure we all probably have been at this place where you only got just a little bit of money in your pocket. Offering plates coming to you or the bag or whatever it may be. And you feel like the Lord's saying, go ahead and put that your money in there. Lord, I, I, this is all I got. This is all I got to pay day. I got to keep on to this. I got to keep a death grip on this two bucks or whatever. Because it's all I got till payday. Maybe payday's five days away or two days away. Whatever it may be. But you know, you're holding on to that thinking, Lord, I, this is all I got. You know, I don't have nothing till then. But you give in, because the Lord's saying, "Well, just just put, it, just trust me, trust me, and put it in there." And so you do. I'm sure we've all probably faced that, where we just had a little bit of money in our pocket, and we felt like the Lord was saying, "Just put that in there, and see what, and I'll show you how good I am." Maybe you've experienced that. Maybe you haven't. I hope you have, because it's amazing. But if you haven't, you know. Pray for God to kind of help you in that way. Because it will it'll definitely be a blessing for you. And as I said in the other one, where it's going to give you a blessing that you can't contain. This is right here. Some of how your, your barns are going to be filled. It's basically saying, you know, that you're going to, you're not going to have, Not saying, you know, that if you give 10%, you're all of a sudden going to be rich. But the amazing thing is you're taking this chunk of money out of your, your check. But the Lord's still providing you everything that you need. And this is an amazing feeling. It really is. Now I'm going to Luke 6, 38, which says... Given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with, the, with it shall be measured to you again. And once again, this is just talking about how if you step out in faith... And honor God with your money. He's going to bless you. 
more than you could ever imagine. I like what 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7 say. It says, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So this is saying right here, if you're holding on to that five bucks, you're saying, I can't do it, Lord. Ain't nothing going to happen. You're going to spend that five bucks real quick and you're not even going to remember what happened with it. But if you put that five bucks in an offering plate, you're going to reap. You're going to get... That five bucks is going to go a lot further than it did if you just spent it. Giving it to the Lord, it will like double. Here in verse 7, Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And this is a verse that thus in church who may be struggling with whether to give or tithe. God doesn't want you to give just going oh, gotta give don't want to I want to hold on to this five bucks but gotta do it he don't want that giver if you're going to act like that about it you just keep it with you and I'm not saying that to be hateful about it it's just that's what grudgingly this is what it's talking about God's not wanting somebody who's going to say oh, I don't want to do this but whatever or necessary like I said, if, if you feel like someone in your church is telling you that you have to do this to be a good Christian and everything, then don't do it. As it says right here, God loves a cheerful giver. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's a heart issue. You know, if you feel like God's talking to you to give, and you do, then you're going to be blessed. But it's a cheerful, God wants a cheerful giver. He doesn't want someone who just says, oh, i got to do this, or, oh, I'm feeling the pressure because everyone's telling me I have to, or I'm not a good Christian. Don't worry about all that. If you want to give, do it because you want to. Not because you feel like you're being pressured, or it's what you have to do. Do it because you want to. And God's going to reward that. That's what he wants is a cheerful giver. There's a couple of verses here that talk about the blessings that you get. First is Deuteronomy 15.10 Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou giveth unto him, because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works, and in all that thou puttest thine hand unto. I love this verse. Look at this again. If we will give to God. And we won't be sad about it. Or, or fell under pressure to do it. Because everyone's telling us to. But when we we're glad to give it to him. It says right here that God is going to bless us. In everything that we do. Maybe you need a healing. But you're not giving. You give to God a little bit of money. That you feel like he's wanting you to do. Maybe you get your healing. I mean, whatever it is. God is going to bless. That's what it says. That God shall bless thee. In all that works. Then we're going to Proverbs 11.24 There is that scattereth and yet increaseth and there is that withholdeth more than is meat but is tenderly to poverty tendereth to poverty excuse me 
And what that's basically telling us here is if we give freely, we're going to gain even more. But if we withhold, if we don't want to give, we want to keep it in our pocket, keep our death grip on it, then we'll lose everything. That's basically what the scripture's telling us. Now I want to go to a familiar story I'm sure you may have heard of. Just like four verses. We're going to read two different, two separate stories of it. The first is in Mark 12. We're going to read 41 through 44. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. And behold how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. Sorry I said that like, I was, like there was more. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow. And she threw in two mites. Which make a f farthing. And he called on, unto him his disciples. And said unto them. Verily I say unto you. That this poor widow. Hath cast in more. Than all they which have. Cast in the treasury. For all they did cast in their abundance. But she of her want. Did cast in all that she had. Even all her living. So see what this is saying here. Is you had these. Rich folks. Like say you're. Let's do it in comparison like. Someone who makes minimum wage and someone who makes like $25 an hour. So you got these people making $25 an hour. So they're like throwing extravagant amounts of money in the offering plate. And this poor person just got a couple bucks. But it's the only couple bucks that they have. And they have a need. And they have it in their heart. God's speaking to their heart. If you give me all that you have, I'm going to bless you. And that's what they did. And Jesus says, Jesus talks about this poor woman. He says, even though you see all these rich guys just throwing in all these extravagant amounts of money, this poor woman with the two little coins that she had gave more than all they did. did. Because even though it was just two little coins, maybe a couple pennies, I don't know exactly. Let's just say it was a couple pennies. She just threw a couple pennies in there. The rest of them had like Fifty and hundred dollars worth of gold coins or whatever it is. He says that that she cast in more because she gave God everything that she had. And now we're going to go into Luke. We're going to go to twenty-one, and we're going to read one through four. The same story told through Luke size or his interpretation. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in through their two mites. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For these have, for all these have cast their abundance. Excuse me. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offering of God. But she of her serfa trip over this word penury hath cast in all the the living that she had. Sorry, I tripped over that word. That's, you know, basically what he's saying there is that, once again, everybody else is given these extravagant amounts. And she's just given a couple coins. But it's literally every cent that she has. But she's given it to God because she has a need. And what she's doing is she is 
demonstrating faith. Hopefully, sorry, my, I hit my mouse. Hopefully we went the right way. But she is demonstrating faith in this scripture right here. Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou giveth unto him, because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works, and in all that thou putteth thine hand unto. So that's what this poor widow woman, ah, sorry about that. That's what this poor widow woman was doing. She was believing that God was going to bless her and honor her if she gave in all that she had. And now we're going to go to a story where Jesus talks about the poor. And this is Matthew 25. We're going to read 35 through 40. Unless I zoom past somewhere else when I hit my mouse. All right. For I was hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Down to 36. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. There in 37. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? And then 38. Or when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Here in 39. Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee. And here finally in 40. And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as you have done it to one of these the least of my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And that's one thing, you know, that, uh, like I said, we were talking about tithing. You're given 10% of your income, which God will bless. Like I said, we read these different scriptures that show that God will bless us if we step out in faith and honor God with our money. But God also wants us as Christians to look after the poor and needy. You know, for those who are poor or widows or fatherless. You know, there's different scriptures that talk about different things like that. And Jesus gives examples of, I was sick and you, you visited me. I was in prison. I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked. And what he's saying here is, you may see somebody, maybe you see like a, a homeless person on the road begging. And you're thinking, oh, this, this guy just wants some beer. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he truly is hungry. You know, if you just step out in faith, if you feel the Lord saying to bless this person, and you just step out in faith and give them whatever the Lord is leaning on your heart, Jesus is basically saying here, No, that guy on the street is not me. But since you humbled yourself and listened to my voice and gave that man something, it's like you gave it to me. And what if it really was the Lord coming in the appearance of a homeless person to test you? And you just said, oh, no, I ain't giving that 
homeless person any money. All they're going to do is buy beer. You know. And there's a lot of verses talking about blessings and cursings of on you know going along with honoring and dishonoring the poor. First we're gonna see is in Proverbs fourteen thirty one which says He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. So it's saying here that if you're oppressing the poor, you're you're basically dishonoring God. But if you honor the poor, you're also honoring God. Here's some more verses about the poor and needy. Psalm, or excuse me, Proverbs 17, 5. Whosoever maketh the, the poor, who has, whoso mocketh the poor, reproacheth his maker, and he that is glad at his calamity shall not go unpunished. So, Excuse me. So this is taking it further than what we read there in 1431, where it's talking about, you know, not having respect for the poor, that you're dishonoring God. Now it's saying, you know, if you're, you're, di if you're dishonoring the poor, you're also dishonoring. Dishonoring God, excuse me. And it says that it will not go unpunished. And that's whether we're a Christian or not. If we feel like the Lord's wanting us to bless the poor in our community or in our country or whatever it is, and we don't do it, there's a punishment for that. It says that it will not go unpunished. Now we're going to 2113, which says, Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he shall also cry himself, but shall not be heard. So this is saying here that if you know if we ignore the poor and needy. then there's going to come a point in time where we'll be in their shoes. And because we didn't help them, no one's going to be there to help us. Now we're going to Proverbs twenty-two sixteen. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches... And he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. So once again it's telling us that if we don't honor the honor the poor and needy, once again it's telling us that we're going to suffer their same fate. And now we're going to go to Psalm 22, or excuse me, Proverbs 22, 22 and 23. Rob not the poor because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. Now 23. For the Lord will plead their cause in the spoil of the soul of those that spoil them. So once again, it's showing us punishment for Ignoring the poor. And I'm not talking about just homeless people. I'm just talking about, you know, there's there's people that maybe they're on, that are living paycheck to paycheck. Maybe they're on, 
You know, um, <sighs> minimum wage. And they got a family. And they're struggling to feed their kids. And you know that they're struggling. And you don't do anything to help. Now we're going on to Proverbs 29.7. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. So here it's talking about how the righteous consider the cause, but the wicked are like, you know, it's not my problem. It's not my kids that are starving. Now we're going to Proverbs 31. We're going to read 8 and 9. Starting here in verse 8. Nope. Sorry about that. Guess we're not. <laughs> First John 3.17 Sorry about that. But whosoever hath this world's goods and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion for him how dwelleth the love of God in him. Now that for us Christians that's a scary verse. See, it says if we, if we got some extra money to spare, and we know that the people next door or or whatever the our coworker or whatever is, you know, struggling to feed their kids or whatever, and we shut up our bowels, as it says here, to that person. It says, "How dwell the love of God in us?" So that is what the church is here for, is to, you know, we're to look after each other. It's not to, the church is not here to build bigger mega churches, and we're not trying to be disrespectful or nothing like that, but we're not here to build mega churches and bigger buildings and gymnasiums and things of that sort. We're here to help the community. Jesus tells us that First two commandments, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what, you know, sometimes the churches may not follow that. They may say that they do, but they may be more concerned about bigger churches or or how to entertain people or whatever else but they're not actually giving to the community they're not you know they don't host a food pantry to help the help the community or they are not doing anything for the community at all whatever it may be and this is saying here how does the love of God dwell in this in this person or a church or whatever if they're not looking after their own and I don't mean just the people that go to their church whether it's community whether it's your your county your state anywhere where you know there's there's needs there's people all over this world who go to bed hungry every night who don't have an adequate roof over their head. You know, there's all kinds of different needs. And if we don't, if we know it, and we're, we have the means. And I'm not saying if you're, now if you're listening and you're, you're a paycheck to paycheck person, maybe getting minimum wage or whatever, and you just barely have enough for your family and stuff. I'm not saying you need to give the rest of your money to, Someone else who's starving. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is if you have the means and you feel like the Lord is telling you to open your heart and to give to somebody and you don't do it, this is flat out saying, 
And how is the love of God in you? Now let's go to the next verse. And I'm sorry, I don't know what's coming up next because we skipped the other one. All right, now we're talking about blessings. He that hath pity on the poor, this is Proverbs 19, 17. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. And this is, once again, should tell us that you know, if we step out, God's going to give us more than He's going to reward us, bless us. So He's saying, you know, if you you feel like someone has a need, and God's putting on your heart to help supply that need, and you do it, then. then it's like you're giving it to God. And He is going to give it back to you again. And like I said, like I was talking about, it, about the $5 in the offering plate, that's your last five bucks in your wallet until payday. And God is telling you to put it in the offering plate. And you step out in faith and do it. It's going to stretch a lot further than if it did if you just bought lunch the next day. I mean, it may stretch out to where you get $10 coming back to you. Or something, maybe someone buys you a meal the next day, that's worth $10. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but basically that's what it's saying here. Is that, you know, it's go God's going to pay it back. It's going to bless you even more. Now we're going to Proverbs 22, 9. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed for he giveth of his bread to the poor now we're going to Proverbs 28 and 27 he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse Now we're going to Colossians 3. We're going to read 23 and 24. It's, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. And I like that verse right there. It doesn't matter if you're tithing, if you're giving into your community or, or to your building funds. For your church or or just adding a couple more dollars to the offering plate whatever it is it says whatever you do do it unto the Lord do it because you want to do it to honor God not because the preachers looking at you and if you don't put a couple bucks in the offering plate he's going to talk about about you in the next sermon don't worry about it you know, do it unto the Lord. Now, the next verse it says, "Knowing that the Lord, you sh that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus, or excuse me, the Lord Christ." Well, that's showing us that when we Whatever we do, if we do it to the Lord and not to men, we do it knowing that the Lord will reward us with an inheritance because we serve Jesus. And we're going to close with these next three verses. Matthew 6, 19-21. Lay up for yourselves treasures upon lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doeth corrupt, wherein thieves break in 
break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, where thieves do not break through and nor steal. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And that's what it's about. That's what I want to bring out about tithing and giving and offerings because like I said it's a heart thing it's not the Lord does want a cheerful giver he wants somebody who is going to give because they want to not because they have to because they feel like it's expected of them or they feel like they're pressured by someone else whether it be a spouse or someone in the church whatever it is if you're not doing it in the right heart, you know, then God doesn't want it. God's not going to bless it. But if you do it because you want to honor God, He's going to bless it. And I pray you got something out of this if you did give God glory. Like I said, I just, how it was, this is another subject like sin and hell that, you know, the two I did two and three four weeks ago you know they, this was a topic that I struggle with should I bring this out because I don't want it to sound like I'm wanting you to send money to me or anything of that sort I don't even have a donation button or anything on my website or anywhere because you know I feel like the Lord called me to do this, and if he wanted to give me abundantly with it, he would, and he will. But if he doesn't, if he just wants me to continue doing what I'm doing, then that's what's going to happen. So I didn't want anybody to think that, oh, the LC minister is just trying to get money today further from the truth. If you choose to bless this ministry, great. If you choose not to, that's perfectly fine. There's no pressure. The only thing I say is that you, that I hope you got something out of this today. And that if you do feel like the Lord is putting it into your heart to give, to whether it be tied into the church you're going to, giving 10% of your income, whether it be just Throwing more, maybe you just tithe only, but the Lord's telling you, throw some money in the offering plate. Don't just tithe on Sunday morning. Throw something in the offering plate Sunday evening, Wednesday, whenever the, your next church services is. Maybe he's telling you to give money to your local food pantry or to someone else that helps the community. Whatever it may be. And there's different Christian charity things that I've researched when I felt like I've wanted to bless other one, someone other than myself. And I've heard a lot of, you know, I've, and I've had people talking about how this one was crooked and this and that. And... There has been some that have have used the money in a unfruitful way. So do your research if you are going to like sow into a Christian charity that's that you're believing is going to be blessing Christians or Jews or whoever it may be. Do some research on the on the company and things of that sort to make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. But even if you don't know that they're doing it, like it says, give unto give unto the Lord, and He'll bless you. No matter what these other people are doing, because you don't know what they're doing. I mean, you give to your church, and they, I mean, the preacher could go gambling it after service. You don't know what he's doing with the, your tithes and offerings. You're just giving to the Lord, and He and God's 
respecting you and uh, blessing you for it. He's not blessing you for what the person on the other end is doing. He's blessing you for stepping out and saying, I trust you, God, that I'm going to give this last two bucks that's in my pocket. And you know, um, this is not to boast about myself, but I do want to brag about God. Once I got serious with the Lord, and because you know, like I've said before, I, for majority of my adulthood life, I played with God. You know. In my 20s and early 30s and stuff, you know, I just, you know, I wanted to, wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I believed I was a Christian. I believed in who Jesus was and that he was the son of God. But I didn't make him my Lord and Savior. And like I said, if you've, if you've experienced this, that you made God the Lord of your life. Then you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't. Then you don't understand what I mean. But there's a difference between. Believing. In that Jesus is the son of God. And making him the Lord of your life. Because when you make him the Lord of your life. Your life changes. You realize that you're not living for yourself anymore. You're living for God. That's why when you mess up. It really bothers you. I beat myself up all the time. Not literally, but... You know... Mentally. Because I am not perfect and I mess up. And I get, I get so worried that... It's going to be that, that one time too many. That God's going to say, I'm done with you. I'm sick of you. I called you back after playing with me for so long and you just keep messing up I'm done I worry about that all the time I beat myself up about it but you see before I got to that point in my life I didn't think about that you know when people say stuff about sins and stuff I'm like I would think of myself like they don't know me they don't know my walk with God but anyway once I got serious with the Lord one thing I was doing was I wasn't tithing. Giving my 10% of my income to the Lord. You call it tithing, you call it offering, whatever it may be. Like I said, I've, when I was kind of researching this, I've heard, you know, seen a lot of people believe that tithing is an Old Testament belief. I even had a preacher one time come, come to church. He, he wasn't preaching, but he was kind of talking to people kind of around it, and he was saying that you shouldn't give any money to the Lord because it's not because nowhere in the Bible does it command that we give money so for I don't even know how long good year or two at least if not more what I was doing was I would I would take money out of my bank. That would be around about the tithing um, total. Maybe less, possibly, probably more or less than the actual amount. But I would use that as, you know, offerings for every, um, you know, for every service. Instead of actually giving want a 10% amount you know immediately after I got it I would spread it out and I would think oh I'm doing good and then I felt the Lord one time well I felt a little conviction at first it was um, kind of the preacher he was kind of making you feel bad if you didn't do it and I got a little irritated and got a little mad and I was like, who is this guy to tell me what to do? And everything. I mean, it wasn't to me personally. It was just a, it was just what was being said and everything at the church. And I was, and I started thinking about it, started praying about it. 
And I felt the Lord telling me to step out, to stop, you know, taking this half of my tithing or maybe sometimes all my tithing and spreading out through the, you know, through other services to tithe it all in one, you know, 10% into at once. And then, you know, eventually I would give you know, more on the offer and plate and other services and stuff. And when I started doing that, it was so hard. It was really hard because, you know, like I said, it's 10% of your income. And when you're going from paycheck to paycheck, that 10%, you just start seeing everything that you could be spending that on well i could be buying a little bit better groceries i could be putting a little bit more gas in the car i could be get me a new computer whatever it is i could get me a better smartphone whatever it is and i just started having these you know almost panic attacks with it in a way not on literally i guess but you know, it's like I would start thinking like, I don't know if I could do this, Lord. But I kept trusting. And I kept doing it. And there's a funny thing happened one time. Like I said, I'm not bragging about me with this. I'm bragging about God. Showing how good God is. It's definitely nothing about me. Because there's no way I could possibly have done this at all. But it was one October. The in September, our toilet had a crack in the in the bowl. We were in the house. We ended up telling the landlord. They ended up replacing the toilet. And then I wouldn't even say it was a week. Our water heater went out. We ended up replacing the water heater. None of that came, you know, that was all covering the rent and everything. We didn't pay a dime for any of that. But let me tell you, when our water bill came in the mail, oh boy howdy, that dude was crazy. Because, you know, you're filling the toilet back up and this water heater. So this thing was high. And that month, you know, I had to pay the gas and electric and everything. I was living with somebody, so they were covering the rent. I was covering the gas, electric, and water. Covering the cell phone bill. Covering the internet bill. Had to get my ID renewed for some reason. I don't know why I didn't get it renewed. Because usually it's around your birthday, mine's in December, but... For some reason, I was doing that in October, too. So it was just a whole bunch of stuff coming in. It's probably, as my ID was probably expired already. I didn't do it until October. I don't know, but... Anyway, I remember that I had to get the ID. There was also uh, something that I wanted to get for me. You know, just a little carnal whatever thing. And I mean, I, I paid the full amount on the gas bill, the full amount on the electric bill, the full amount on the water. Everything I paid in full and got this carnal thing that I wanted. And looking back, and I also paid my, you know, I put my tithe in it out first. Looking back, trying to, you know, Thinking about what I was making at that point in time, this is probably 2018. There is no way humanly possible that I can think of, no way in the natural, that I paid all that. Absolutely no way. I mean, I just, there is nothing, nothing I can think of. No way possible that I was able to do that. 
but it was beyond human possibility. That was all God. Not only did I get to, I got to pay all the bills. I got that little carnal thing, this little stupid thing I wanted, that didn't matter to nothing. It wasn't cheap either. And I swung it all. I mean, I may have gotten a hundred bucks from people I was living with. Maybe 50, I don't know. But even with that, there's still no way possible that all that was covered. But it was. So that's, I just want to show you that example to, sh to give you that example to show you that if we step out, if we tithe like the Lord wants us to, and like I said, you know, some churches may, may tell you that you don't have to do it because it's an Old Testament principle. There in Malachi, was it 3.10, God said to test him. That he's, to test him that he's not going to give you more than you can imagine. That's not saying to tempt him. But if you feel like God's telling you, go ahead and give me 10% of your income. And you do it, then he's going to bless you more than you can imagine. If you feel like God's telling you to add a little bit more to the offering plate. Help out in your community. Give to a Christian outreach program. Whatever it may be the Lord's talking to you about. If you step out in faith and do it, God will bless you for it. Like I said, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, God, give God glory. I pray that I gave this the way the Lord wanted me to do it. I just wanted to show you the importance of stepping out in faith and getting out of your comfort zone if you feel like the Lord's wanting you to give a little something more and it's showing how he will bless you and I pray that you got something out of it if you did give God glory like I said read the word for yourself you may think that some of these words that I didn't define like I did with tithing you may think that I'm just making up what they're what they mean or, or maybe you think I'm just twisting the scriptures just read it for yourself these sermon notes are right here in the bottom of this video in every video on any site that I post you scroll down past the video you're gonna to see today we're talking about whatever and then it's gonna say sermon notes PDF click on that bad boy read the scriptures for yourself don't just read those scriptures read around the scriptures like if it's Psalm 3216 I don't know if there was a Psalm 3.16. Let's say John 3.16. You know, a lot of people love to quote John 3.16. I love the very next verse. Because it says that he came not to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. But everyone quotes the, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. But if you continue on, if you read before and after, you get more stuff. And if you feel like there's a scripture, that may be making it scratch your head a little bit going thinking, I don't know if that's what that means. Read around it. You'll get clued in. But like I said, don't always pray before you read. Read it. And then pray after. Pray for God to give you understanding before you read it. And after you read it, give him, pray that God gives you understanding and revelation of what you just read. So I pray that you guys will know this. Read the word for yourself. Don't take my word or anybody else's. Know what the word says for yourself. That you're not deceived. 
I love you. God bless you. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, give God glory. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us next week. I had started on a sermon earlier today. And... Lord, as I was working on it, the Lord said, No, we're doing something else. And I'd already had some stuff prepared. So when he's when he said we're doing something else, I was like grabbing my about to pull my hair out because I'm like What do I do now? I already kinda got a little idea of what I'm doing with this other thing. But you want me to do completely something completely different all on the same day. So maybe God will want me to bring that out next week. Maybe I'll go in the garbage can. I don't know. But I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us next week. I love you. God bless you. I hope you have a great week. And we'll see you next week, God willing, as we continue to hear what the Word has to say. Jesus is coming soon. I hope you're ready. I love you. God bless you. If the Lord is telling you, to give money that you don't deny it because we did get warning signs of what will happen to you but like I said it's a heart issue it's not it's not because I'm telling you to do it it's not because the preacher at your church is telling you because your spouse is telling you because your brother or sister or whomever it may be it's between you and the Lord so listen to the Lord for what he has to say to you I love you God bless you we'll see you next week God willing